When violinist Moshe Hammer and painter Mike Hammer meet on stage, their collaboration has been described as a unique crescendo. The father and son team have been mixing music and art for the past year. It's a whole new way of exploring rhythm, color, and form. When the music swirls, so does the paintbrush. We invite you to go with the flow. Moshe and Mike Hammer on stage in Studio Two. Fantastic. Mike, that is awesome. Step into my Thank office, you. please. Thank you. Moshe, welcome back to Studio Two. Great to so be here. So great to see you again, and great to have you nice here for the first time. Steve. That is extraordinary. We've never seen anything like this here before. So who gets the credit? Who came up with this idea? <laughs> I think Mike was. Did you come up with this? I came up with the idea. I've been performing, you know, in different situations on my own in informal settings, and one day I saw. Uh, I guess my dad performs at the Glen Ghoul, and I looked at the stage, and I could just see myself performing to the side beside him. And uh, I think two days later, I went up and said, Dad, can I join you? And six months later, or something like that, we performed together for the first time at the Gould. I want to know his reaction. When, you, when, when he said, I want to come up and paint <laughs> what you play, what did you say? It took me about two seconds of say, ooh. Wow, I mean, I, it, it was it was uh, different. It was definitely different. I know that thing. People have done what I call performance art, but uh, to me, to do some Bach, for me to do some Bach and Beethoven or whatever we did, that that was just amazing. What did you just play? 
Zum Bach. It was Bach. a preludium by Bach. And will you draw Bach essentially the same way every time? No, definitely not. I, it depends on how I'm feeling, the colors, how spontaneous I'm feeling. I mean, all of life's forces conjure at that moment. And uh, it'll depend on the particular situation, too, and how, uh, really how I'm feeling in that moment. Today, if he I felt plays a piece the same way the twice same in a row, piece, sure. will you paint the same painting? No, no. I may approach it in, with the same medium. I may use the same kind of styles in terms of swirls. But you take two pieces, and I won't see the same piece. And people who maybe look at art more often, or people who would, a uh, person who would spend more time, a few minutes to look at both pieces would know they're different. Some people have looked at them quite honestly and said, well, it's the same piece. And really, they're not looking at it. It's like somebody who says uh, two rock and roll pieces are both the same. Gotcha. They really haven't listened to them. The purists, when they come to your performances expecting mm -hmm. to see and hear you in the way they always have, mm -hmm. what do they make of this? Number one, they don't watch me anymore. <laughs> it's true. People say to me, as much as I listen to music, I don't look at you anymore because the action is there. But I don't mind, you know, I become, I don't want to say secondary because I'm part of it, but definitely not firstly when it comes to the visuals. Everybody said to me, we didn't watch you at all. Now, be honest, you are a man of tremendous talent, and you don't mind my saying a bit of ego as well, as you have to be to be in your business. Right. Does it not disturb you a little bit? to know that people are watching him while you're over there playing your guts out? Well, you as a dad should know the answer. <laughs> it's, it's the only, I think, the only person, I think, that we give literally everything to is kids. You totally. couldn't do this with anybody else, then? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me about growing up with this guy's influence. How did he influence, you're obviously not a musician, but you're an artist as he is. How did he influence you in that respect? Art. I was always around the house. My dad had a particular interest in art, and my mom and they both would buy art and look at art. And so it was always there. I remember, I mean, I, I grew up with certain paintings, and I'd see them years later, and the painting was of something, and I, there was a feeling associated, a warmth. And so just the, the amount of art around the house, and they always encouraged me, was great. As far as playing, I can always remember just hearing practicing and great nostalgia. And people would call me on the phone, and I'd talk to them, and say, your dad's playing on the background. I'd say, oh, really? Because, I mean, for me, it was just always there. But it brings a great feeling to hear it when I listen to his CDs. And when I get to perform, I get to hear it all over again. So Now, we expect yeah. the father to influence the son, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it works the other way as well. Actually, not really, because if, if, if I start watching what Mike is doing and, 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 and trying to do some Bach, right, it doesn't work. It just somehow doesn't work. You can't watch him paint while you play. I could, but then something would happen probably to the music. Because I noticed you when you were playing. You, you never watched him once, no, I don't think. No, it, it, would, were... it would totally take away from my, my focus uh, of, of what, I'm, what I'm supposed to do, and that's not good. OK. That's not. Do people, at, when you do this publicly at shows, do, do you sell these things after the show's over? Surprisingly, I tell you, this was one of my biggest concerns. The first performance at the Gould, I had an exhibit at the front of the Gould as well with some of the works that were similar. And they're selling for whatever, $500, $1,000. And I'm thinking, I'm going to make one of those similar, quite large, because I was doing larger pieces, because we had full 15-minute pieces, in 15 minutes. And they're going to be for sale. How are people going to respond? The last piece sold right up on the stage. We've gone to Holland. Uh, somebody came right up after and sold it. One sold at auction, one of these drawings. And the only thing I can say is that people like the work, and they, the something about the experience of watching the piece be created, really for all those people, it's an important part of what they've done. Demystifies art in a, in a large way, doesn't it? It does demystify. And I've had some critics say, you know, they don't think that's good. They say the whole thing about art is the mystique, the, the, you know, the artist, ooh, what's going on? And, you know what? That's OK that they say that. I'm a teacher. I like to share. If somebody wants to ask me my technique, I'm not going to hide it. Which composer do you think he paints the best? <laughs> I presume the one that I'm playing at this moment. Is that right? I think What so. are you going to do for us next? Uh, we're going to play some Bloch. Mm. Some who? Bloch. OK. And this is the Nigun from the Balsham Suite, very, very impassioned piece. Well, we have seen Mike's work, and we are going to see, I guess, another of Mike's works coming up. Let's see some of yours, Moshe, if we can. Let's take a look at your latest. Here's the cover of your latest CD, Dances and Romances for Violin. Moshe, I've been playing it all week long, and it's just, as one would expect with a Moshe Hammer piece, fantastic. This is exciting. Let's see it one more time. 
Painter, Mike Hammer, violinist, Moshe Hammer, on stage in Studio 2.